Getting more sales from your Amazon account. That is something that everyone would like to do, let's be honest with ourselves. But the question then becomes, okay, so how do I do it? What should I be looking at? What numbers tell me if I'm growing or if I'm shrinking or if I'm not growing as much as I would like to, why? That's something that I have to show to you today and I am calling it the Amazon growth equation. Let's dig into it. I don't know about you, but when it comes to growing a brand on Amazon, there is a whole lot of data to consider, right? There are so many things that we can take into account, like we have our listings that convert well, like what traffic are we running? Are we ranking on any of our main keywords? How do you determine how to grow a brand on Amazon? And that is something that I'm constantly puzzling over because I run an Amazon advertising agency, which helps brands grow on the platform. And so I'm always like, oh, are our brands growing? And if they're not, why are we stuck? Why can't we get this product off the ground? And so. Again, trying to take in all the data points and make amazing dashboards and all of these things. And a lot of times I end up sitting far too long analyzing things and just trying to make sense of it all and walk away with, well, that was neat. Now, what am I supposed to do about it? And so uh, through that process and really trying to hone in on what are the main important key aspects, I have come up with this thing that I'm calling the Amazon growth equation. Yes, I'm giving it a really catchy clickbaity title, but there you go. And what this equation boils down to, I am always trying to get the most amount of information for the least amount of inputs. So again, with all the things to look at, like unit session percentage and how many units you're ordering, but then this is how many orders you have and then sales and sessions and oh my goodness, plus all the ad data, like what am I supposed to look? Show me what I need to look at, show me how it relates to itself and show me what I can do about it. And so that is what I'm going to be presenting to you today. We're gonna to go over the basics of this equation, like why it is what it is, and then we'll go over maybe some use cases on how you could use it to possibly forecast, or if you're stuck or decreasing in sales, how this equation can help you go, oh, that's the reason, let me go figure out how to fix it. All right, so here we are in this spreadsheet, which I will be linking down below as a downloadable resource. If you would like, feel free to click and make a copy for yourselves. It is a simple multiplication equation and you need three numbers, which can be found in your business reports. So all you need to go to one place, you need to snag three numbers and you need to look at those numbers and then they will tell you how you're doing on sales. And then you can look at these numbers over time to tell you if you're growing or shrinking and why you're growing or you're shrinking. And so we're going to look at this very similar to a classic business funnel, shopper funnel. I don't care if you are selling direct to consumer like consumer goods or if you have an agency like me, if you are looking to grow top line revenue, what you do is you say, okay, backing up, I wanna make this amount of sales. Okay, how many units do I need to sell to make that amount of sales because I sell it for X, Y, Z. Okay, now I know how many units I need to sell. So how many people do I need to get to see my product to be able to say, hey, all I'm interested. So for me, leads for you would be sessions is what we're gonna cover. And then what does that translate to in the end? So if I know I can get this input, I can get this output. So it's like that. It's a little bit less simple because we're going to be popping in conversion rate right here, which in this case is unit session percentage, which is super important. So important when it comes to Amazon sales, keeping track of your conversion rates and making sure you are still competitive in the market. But I digress, let us now look at the funnel. So the way it works is we're going to take our sessions multiplied by our conversion rate and our average order value, and this is going to equal our sales. So here in these cells I've entered in, say we got a thousand sessions, right? So say we have a 10% conversion rate. So for every 10 clicks, we're going to make one order. And for each of these orders, we have an average order value of $20. So that means we get a thousand people to check out the product. We get 10% of those to say, yep, take my money. I'm interested. And then every time someone raises their hand or swipes their credit card, we get $20. That would translate to $2,000 in sales and you might say great thank you you have given me a shopper funnel for amazon 
how is this helpful? <laughs> and I completely get that. That is most of the time the question I have. I'll come up with all these equations. I'm like, this is so cool. And then it's like, all right, so how do I use it? So I'm going to tell you how you can use it. So the way this, why this is helpful, because if sales go up or down, so say instead of a 10% conversion rate, we get a nine or yeah, let's do 9% conversion rate. So we get $1,800 in sales versus our $2,000 in sales. If we're tracking things in our business reports, or maybe you have some other software you're using to track your daily sales, you would say, oh, okay, I made $2,000 yesterday. I made $1,800 today going down by $200. Like, why am I going down by $200? And so by breaking it out like this, how this becomes helpful is it gives you context onto what thing changed that made the sales decrease. Because again, if you're only tracking top line sales, what happens usually is you all get clients all the time. Oh my goodness, sales are this, sales are that, or hey, we're up. That's amazing. What did you do? And by using this equation, again, this is not taking into account what I do on the ads. Obviously, ads is going to be part of this session piece over here because it's what I do. I drive traffic. But if you're trying to figure out like what happened, sometimes it's not even the ad. Maybe we're running things the same. Maybe the amount of sessions being put into the funnel is exactly the same as it was before. So in this case, we still have a thousand sessions, but we went down a point on conversion rate. We didn't change anything in the price point, but our sales dropped. So you can see why we're looking at it on a funnel that is how you can start to say, oh, okay, I get it now. So if I'm having a sales up or down, ideally up, say if tomorrow we hit an 11% conversion rate, great, we just made an extra few hundred dollars. Why? A couple more people ended up raising their hand and making a purchase, swiping the card, and we ended up with those in our total sales equation. So you can see how by looking at these numbers, so you're like, great, what do I do? I use the sheet every day and plug in my numbers and be like, great, that's how you calculate the sales. So how I would recommend doing this is by tracking these things over time. Sometimes you will have a software tracking software. We have one it's called Kpop. We link it down below. It allows us to overlay several different trends and we can say, okay, so sessions are this and conversion rates are this and the average order value is this. So therefore, which of these things did we see a dip and that resulted in a top line sales change. That's how we would analyze this, but you can also just build out very simple spreadsheets. So again, all of these numbers can be viewed in a report. So you can go through and you can say, okay, so what is sessions? What is conversion rate? What is average order value? You can actually even download reports that will give you these over time. So if you would like to look at your trends in the sessions, look at your trends in the average conversion rate, and then look at your trends in the average order value, and then see, okay, so how are these impacting my sales? That's where it starts to get super cool. So how I would look at this is I would really just keep a pulse on sessions, right? So there's two things you want to know, and that is, this equation is going to help you figure it out. One is, am I getting traffic to my listing? That is sessions. That's people in the top of the funnel, right? They're coming into the listing, eyeballs on the product. Are we getting enough eyeballs on the product? Or is the issue that we're no longer getting eyeballs on the product? And that leads me to my second point is you might say, okay, sessions, conversion rates, average order value equals sales. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So my sessions went down. What do I do about it? So the thing about this equation is it tells you where to dig. I do not know about you, but I can spend hours analyzing things in accounts. If you have hundreds or thousands of products and you are trying to evaluate where all of your products rank, that task is monumental. Even if you have keyword tracking software, which you should be tracking, but if you are trying to analyze like, how are my products ranking? That task is man monumental and you probably have only earmarked a very select handful of your products to try and figure out where your products are ranking. You're like, all right, these are my important ones. So I'm gonna track these maybe even daily, but everything else, I just don't have time. If you are tracking things like this, so what we've done is we built certain tracking dashboards and we'll look at it on a listing level. So a parent ASIN level, you can go and snag this data inside of your business board ports right now, looking at the parent ASIN level. And I would say, okay, what are my session trends? What are my conversion rate trends? And what are my average order value trends on a parent ASIN level? And if I see a dip in the sessions, I know that's a dip in traffic.
So then my question then becomes, okay, if I have a dip in sessions, what influences sessions? And I go look at my rankings. I will go look at primarily rankings, but I also want to look at my ads. Am I still competitive on my ads? Have I over optimized my ads? And those are the, those would be the main ones that I would look at. And so that allows me to say, okay, there's a problem. Now I need to go dig into this problem versus going again, looking at trying to look at all the keywords and oh, am I still competitive? Allow the data to show you where you need to dig into and correct in your account. Don't start in the weeds and starting at the very bottom, trying to like piece out what actually needs to happen. The biggest impact you're going to have is zooming out and then zooming in to where you need to fix the problem. That's what this equation allows you to do. It allows you to get insights into what is hindering your growth. So for instance, if we are constantly declining on sessions and our sales are dropping, we can say, oh, it's a session issue. It's a problem with this. And if you have little to no time, a really good way thing to do is maybe track this on a total account level if that's the easiest way for you to do it and say okay our sessions up or down and then what you can do is say oh no sessions are down then let's zoom down into a parent ASIN level and say where has the most decrease in sessions happened because we know that's the main problem that we're having on our sales decrease okay so where have sessions happened okay so I know it's these two products right here cool let me now dig into those products how are they ranking how are we doing with the ad to drive sessions maybe i'm driving external traffic and i'm having an issue maybe we were doing i don't know like an influencer campaign and all of a sudden that stops so therefore our sessions drop so like we're dig into the nitty gritty but if you again if you're in the weeds trying to figure out what you need to look at the data can be absolutely overwhelming but if you can zoom into this specific problem in the specific place and then you allow that to lead you down the rabbit hole that's how you figure out what's actually the problem, why it's a problem. And when you hear people talk about, oh yes, I had an issue with my sales drop, so I backtrack it to a competitor that had dropped their price on it, it's because they're looking at data like this. Now you might be just perusing your competitor and you might see that maybe they dropped their price and you're like, oh, but until you go in the back end, zoom out, look at the data and you go, okay, what is dropping my conversion rate? Okay, let me go look at the market. Let me look at my review ratings. Let me look at what my price point is doing. How am I competitive to the market? Is there anything on my listing that it maybe isn't converting as well? Maybe I am really low on ranking and I'm just showing up in places that people don't want to purchase the product as much. There's plenty of reasons why conversion rate might have dropped, but if you're trying to like track all your reviews every day, track all your competitor pricing, track, 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 Again, on large accounts for main products, that probably makes sense, but I can guarantee you no one with a large account is tracking that across their entire catalog. What this allows you to do is allows you to track three numbers to backtrack to the one big number that is important to you, which is sales growth, and then you can easily track three numbers and how those numbers are performing up or down across a very large catalog, put it in a spreadsheet, use some conditional formatting, red if it's down, green if it's up, and then you're like, okay, this one sales down, red or green conversion rate, sessions, average order value, boom, I know where to dig, let me go fix it. And that is the process that we use constantly in our agency to help our sellers keep on track of their sales and their growth and figure out the big question, which is why or how can I increase my sales? So hopefully that was helpful. Feel free to snag the resource down below. And as always, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer in the comments.